Hi there. Did you know that in Britain we really like owning our homes? It's true. We're a nation of home owners, or at least would be homeowners. It's such a part of our culture that the housing market significantly influences our economy. But can you guess what's about to happen in the UK housing market? That's right, there's a storm coming and it's about to shake things up. Intrigued? Today we'll take a look at the world of personal finances, specifically focusing on the UK housing market. And it's not just about houses or money. It's about understanding that this is a part of British culture and lifestyle that's so embedded. House buying, watching house prices, is practically a national pastime. And what may happen economically in the UK? Perhaps that's happening in your country too. For those of you who are here to improve your English, we'll be discussing this topic using clear, easy to understand British English with lots of useful vocabulary relating to your personal finances. You'll be understanding and using these words in no time. This is an English lesson that's useful in the real world. And there's advice on buying a property right at the end. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Before we go on, remember, if you want to make the most out of this podcast, pause it when you need to, replay parts that you find difficult, and please get in touch to ask questions or share your thoughts. And don't forget, if you want to learn English using the Adept English podcast, make sure you've done our free course, The Seven Rules of Adept English. This will show you how to use our podcast to improve your English. Go to adeptenglish.com and sign up for the Seven Rules course today. It's free. Now let's dive into this subject. Owning a house is a dream for many in the UK. But unfortunately, it's becoming an increasingly expensive dream. First of all, some really useful vocabulary for you around house buying. We use the word property, P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y in this context, to mean any type of home, a house, an apartment, a flat, whatever it is. The average price of a property in the UK, well, as of March 2023, this is £285,000. That's a lot of money. Bear in mind that's an average, which includes the cheapest type of property as well as the large houses. The size of the house, the number of bedrooms, the look and the style of the house all determine its price, its value, as well as its condition. Does it need work? And the location, where the house is, that's a massive factor too in its price. Clearly, a house in central London is going to be much more expensive than one in the north of Scotland. But even within a particular town, there are more expensive areas because they're nicer and less expensive areas because they're not so nice. So property is expensive in the UK and yet most of us still want to own property. Unless you're very well off, rich if you like, you'll not have enough money in your bank account to buy a house. That's where borrowing comes in. The verb to borrow, B-O-R-R-O-W, means that you don't have the money for something that you want to buy. So someone, usually a bank, gives you the money as a loan, L-O-A-N, meaning they give you the money to buy what you want and you pay the bank or whomever back gradually over a period of time. The noun is borrowing. So you might buy a car and get a car loan to finance the buying of your car. And the same with a house, though clearly we're talking much bigger sums of money being borrowed over longer periods of time. And the type of loan you need here, usually taken out over many years, it's called a mortgage. That's M-O-R-T-G-A-G-E. The opposite of to borrow is to lend, L-E-N-D. That's when you're the one handing over the money. So we talk about banks as mortgage lenders, L-E-N-D-E-R-S, possibly 
quite a lot of new vocabulary here. Make sure you listen to this podcast a number of times to help it stick in your mind. Mortgage is an interesting word. It means a death pledge and a pledge, P-L-E-D-G-E, is a promise. Mortgage is from the French, who actually now use a different word altogether for their mortgages. Their word is hypothèque. A mortgage is a death pledge because the agreement dies if the person borrowing fails to pay or they die. Your house, your property gets repossessed, if you like, by the bank, by the mortgage lender. Remember the global financial crisis of 2008 and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in the US? Do you remember those names? They were the big mortgage lenders who'd lent money to too many people. When the mortgage lender takes back the house, the property, in the US they call it foreclosure. They foreclose on properties, F-O-R-E-C-L-O-S-E. Here in the UK, we use the verb to repossess, R-E-P-O-S-S-E-S-S, or the noun repossession. Again, not what anyone wants to happen. Anyway, there are concerns at the moment about the UK mortgage market and the UK property market. In 2022, house prices were at a peak, their highest point ever, with the average house in the UK costing £295,000. We're now expecting what is known as a crash, C-R-A-S-H, a sharp downturn in property prices and in the number of new mortgages being taken out. There are a number of reasons for this. The verb to afford something, A-F-F-O-R-D, means to be able to pay for something, to have enough money for something. And affordability is the noun, meaning how affordable something is. So property prices have been high, while at the same time, the level of affordability has come down in recent months. People cannot afford to get such a big mortgage, such big loans anymore. Part of this is the interest rate. Again, you'll have a different word in your language, but you'll certainly have interest, I-N-T-E-R-E-S-T. The mortgage lenders and banks don't just give money out for houses because they're kind. They make money out of it, so they charge interest on their loans. The borrower usually pays back much more money than they borrowed especially over the term of a mortgage. And this percentage is called interest or the interest rate. Interest rates have been very, very low in the UK and around the world for the last few years. So people have got used to interest rates of 0.5 of a percent or 1%. Now in the UK, interest rates have risen to about 6% and may rise some more. This means difficulties for many people in their personal finances, depending upon how much they've borrowed. If the interest rate goes up, this massively increases the cost of repaying a mortgage. So people who bought a house and took out a mortgage a couple of years ago are facing much bigger payments to keep their house. For example, if you bought a house and took out a mortgage for the average UK house price, in November 2022, 295,000, then you'll already be paying an extra £500 every month for your mortgage on this higher interest rate of 6%. And of course, there are people whose mortgages are much bigger than this. They may be paying an extra £1,000 per month for their mortgage. This is very difficult for many people. People's income, the money from their jobs remains the same. Few people are getting a pay rise at the moment. And the problem isn't just because of mortgage interest rates rising. The situation is also worse because of inflation. I-N-F-L-A-T-I-O-N. Inflation means simply price rises and inflation can harm a country's economy. I've talked about inflation in previous podcasts. The last one was podcast 650, where I compared the cost of shopping in the UK with the cost in other European countries. In the UK, inflation is a big problem at the moment. Prices of pretty much everything, including food, have risen by over 20% in the last year alone. People don't have much money to spare. There's little left over when they've paid their bills, they've paid for their essentials. So this combination, 
interest rate rise to 6% and the risk of further rise plus 20% inflation may mean in the longer term a property crash. That is, UK house prices will come down sharply because hardly anyone will be able to afford them at their high level. A reduction in the cost of buying a house may be great news if you don't yet own a house, especially if your pay, your income is good or increasing. A property crash for you may mean that you can finally afford to buy a house or buy a bigger house, or it may mean that the house you like will cost less of your monthly income if you buy it. But for many people who bought their house at the top of the market, as we say, when house prices were at their peak, their most expensive, a property crash is a disaster potentially. Homeowners can get into a situation where their house is worth less than they paid for it. And this can be really difficult. They don't then have the option to sell their house and pay off the mortgage unless they can pay the difference, the shortfall. They'd have to save up and put money in in order to be free of their property. And that's not possible if you don't have much spare money each month. What a nightmare. And we call this in UK English negative equity. That's N-E-G-A-T-I-V-E and equity, E-Q-U-I-T-Y. This phrase means you've borrowed money, invested that money in a house, and it's now worth less than you paid for it. Not a good situation when we expect the value of our houses to increase and them to be an investment for us. So none of this is the dream of anyone who sets off with the desire of home ownership. It's not how it's supposed to go, but it does feel as though conditions are set for this to happen. I'm not predicting 2008 all over again. I think mortgage lenders have taken fewer risks since then. But I think it could get difficult for homeowners and for the UK economy over the next few months. So my advice would be, don't buy a house in the UK right now. Wait, and you'll perhaps get it for much less money. I wonder whether the situation is the same in other countries, in Europe and the rest of the world. I think us British are particularly in favour of buying our own homes, while many Europeans at least prefer to rent. I think rental terms are better in many countries in Europe than in the UK. And that's part of that cultural difference too. Anyway, once again, I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this. I hope this podcast has taught you some essential vocabulary for home buying, personal finances. Don't forget to listen to it a number of times to help any new words stick. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.